have a cave troll. It seems that every time a rival to its mega theropod throne appears, Tyrannosaurus summons a new supergiant fragmentary specimen out of the void. In 2023, a chunk of Giga Dentary was reconstructed as being comparable to Scotty at 10.4 tons. Cope showed up with the femur, fibula, tibia, and maxilla, and ended up being about a ton heavier. This time, a second Meraxi specimen turned out to be gigantic, comparable to the Giga holotype at between 8 and 9 tons. And the new Giga reconstruction gives the dentary specimen an approximately 10.6 ton mass. Naturally, Goliath spawned in with femur measurements that were so much bigger than any other theropod that I just had to make a video on it. I remember how it felt to take that throne. Let's see if this newcomer is legit, and if so, how Goliath shakes up the megatheropod podium. First of all, let's temper some expectations. I don't want this specimen getting blown out of proportion. Goliath is an isolated Tyrannosaurus femur from Harding County, South Dakota, discovered in September 2024 by Lauren Gersh and Lauren McLean. It was displayed at the Tucson Rock and Mineral Show by the Black Hills Institute. The measurements of the femur were posted publicly, and wow. Let's unpack these numbers. 137.1 cm length and 64.7 cm circumference, that's frankly insane. Taking the measurements at face value, assuming that they were all taken using the exact same methods, would imply that Goliath's femur is an average of 4.75% longer and 13% wider than these other big rexes on the BHI's list. Yep, even bigger than Cope. There are some issues with that assumption, though. While Goliath's femur seems to be in overall good shape, there's clear damage on the proximal and distal ends that make measuring its length difficult. So how do we know if it's really that big? I reached out to Peter Larson of the BHI for details. Larson typically measures from the greater trochanter, found on the superior lateral point of the femur, down to the lateral condyle, where the femur articulates with the tibia. Goliath's greater trochanter, unfortunately, was damaged during transport, so he gave instructions to measure down from the femoral head instead. That's how the length of 137.1 cm was obtained, while the circumference of 64.7 cm was from the center of the shaft, where the femur is the thinnest. That's standard practice. I reached out to my friend Brian Curtis of Fossil Crates to see if he could visit Goliath and verify those measurements. You may have already seen the video he posted about his trip. Using multiple measuring methods, Brian confirmed Goliath's length of 137 plus centimeters from femoral head to medial condyle, and measured the least circumference as approximately 650 millimeters, since he couldn't get the tape all the way around the enormous bone. Keep in mind that the 137 centimeter length isn't accounting for the damage to the femoral head, and would have been longer by a small amount. For the sake of being conservative, we won't include a theoretical complete length in our size calculations. Even without speculating, it seems that the intimidating robusticity of Goliath is, in fact, real. I was also concerned about preparation. Was the length perhaps exaggerated by filling in plaster? By looking at the photos, restoration work seemed minimal, and the label confirms this, stating that no restoration took place other than small cracks. That would indicate that the length is also legitimate. We may have a genuine monster on our hands. <laughs> Keep in mind, as massive as this femur is, it's just a femur. Scaling from a single bone is never ideal, and I'd love to have more material to work with to see if perhaps this specimen just had awkwardly large thighs. I'll play devil's advocate for a moment, though. If Goliath's femur is both longer and more robust than any other rex specimen, the most parsimonious assumption is that the animal itself was correspondingly large. You add more steps and room for fallacy by attempting to downsize the creature or baselessly assigning it odd proportions based on material we don't even have. Does Goliath have as good of material as, say, Cope? No, and it's nowhere near as solid as Sewer Scotty. Is it better than a piece of a jawbone? By leaps and bounds. I've said this before, but I'll say it again for those in the back. If you accept the dentary giga as 10 plus tons, and reject even larger specimens with better remains like Cope and Goliath, then your opinion about scaling fragmentary megatheropods doesn't really mean much. He's out of line, but he's right. Now that the disclaimers are out of the way, let's get to scaling a fragmentary megatheropod. The first method is femur allometry. Using trends observed in the relationship between femur circumference and body mass in living animals to predict body mass in extinct ones. I cover this method in detail in the Paleontology Size Guide video, which you might enjoy. Plugging Goliath's ridiculous 64.7 centimeters into the femur circumference formula yields a staggering 11,468 kilograms. For comparison, the same method gets under 9 tons for both Scotty and Sue, and 10.6 tons for Cope. 
It's also known to generally underestimate theropod dinosaurs compared to more detailed and precise volumetric methods. Rigorous graphic double integration estimates give Sue and Scotty between 10 and 10.5 tons. Allometry is better used for wide-scale studies about evolutionary trends between different groups instead of precise estimates for an individual animal. That being said, the fact that even allometry gets comfortably over 11 tons for Goliath is a little upsetting, nearly a ton heavier than the same method gets for Cope. Isometrically scaling circumference from Sue and Scotty would yield 11.8 and 11.5 tons respectively, but I'm not sure if that method is any good. Femoral volume is emerging as a powerful proxy, and my friend Dino W developed a formula utilizing Campione and Evans' dataset that spits out accurate numbers for living animals even when using a single bone. The relationship is consistent across squamates, quadrupedal mammals, and living large-bodied archosaurs like crocodilians and flightless birds. The body mass ratio of specimen A to B is found like this. Divide femur volume B by femur volume A, take the result to the 0.94 power, and copes your uncle. For this example, let's pretend Sue's femur is a cylinder. Based on 3D scan data, the length from the femoral head to the medial condyle in a straight line is 138.6 centimeters, with a circumference of 59 centimeters. Let's do some quick math to convert that to a cylinder for the purpose of this example. And then we can plug that into the adjusted femoral volume calculator. So the body mass ratio would be 1.177, indicating that Goliath is 17.7% heavier than a given value for Sue. Using Random Dino's most recent Sioux skeletal, which was GDI'd at around 10.2 tons, yields 12 tons flat for Goliath. Using the same femoral volume comparison with Dan Folk's Scotty as a proxy, again using 3D scan data for femoral head to lateral condyle, gets 12.5 tons. To sum things up, using methods ground truth by testing in modern animals, and scaling from highly complete Tyrannosaurus specimens, we're looking at a mass range of 11.47 tons on the low end, to 12.53 tons on the high end. Anything above that is pretty questionable, and anything below is, again, baselessly assuming that the rest of the skeleton is freakishly small. Remember though, it's just a femur, and individual variation is a thing. I won't go so far as to join the camp of those who look at Cope exceeding Sue in all but one measurement and still convince themselves it's smaller. I'm not going to prop Goliath up on a pedestal and say it's definitely the largest Rex either. But the more I think about it, the more sense that makes. Based on the math we just went over, there's a serious possibility. Given that femur allometry alone gets it a ton heavier than Sue and Scotty's volumetric models. Obtaining 3D scans of the specimen would allow us to more directly compare femora. Brian did scan the beast during his trip to Tucson, but unfortunately is not permitted to share it. Even if it did turn out that the length had been exaggerated by several centimeters during repairs, which seems unlikely, this thing would still probably be cope-sized, well over 11 tons. The cream of the megatheropod crop, then, if we did include the fragmentary giants, would look something like this. Goliath is in first place, with 11.4 tons as the floor and 12.5 as the ceiling. Just over 13 meters is a realistic length, but calculating body length from a femur is a bit iffier than doing it for mass. Cope is in second, with isometry, allometry, and femoral volume yielding a range of 10.6 to 11.7 tons. Again, length is very uncertain, but anywhere between 12.5 and 12.9 meters is pretty reasonable. Dentary Giga would be in third. While nowhere near as reliable, I'm not a fan of chin fragment scaling personally, 10.6 tons scaling from the holotype is nothing to sneeze at. Cope is easily the best of these in terms of material and is the most solid candidate for biggest theropod overall, but that's the politically correct answer. Goliath may be just a femur, but it's so stupidly massive that it's hard to argue in good faith that it's not a serious contender for the world's biggest theropod, especially after discussing it with Larson and Curtis. If it does get downsized, I'll keep you all updated. And of course, the reverse is also true. Some doubts still remain. How did taphonomy affect it, if at all? What did the rest of the animal look like? One thing we learned from this specimen is that dinosaurs as a group continue to push the envelope with regards to their size ceilings. Many of you will remember Hone and Mallon's study from 2024 calculating that from a population of 140 million Tyrannosaurus, you could expect a single individual to hit the fabled 15 ton mark. We have maybe a couple dozen adult specimens with size estimates, and out of that small group we already have giants comfortably exceeding 10 tons, and possibly pushing 12 in Goliath's case. That 15 ton max was calculated by projecting the species' maximum mass as 70% larger than the current which the study regarded as an 8.8 .8 ton Scotty based on allometry. 
Swap that methodology out for the more precise volumetry, apply the same ratio, and you end up with a max sized hypothetical rex of 20.4 tons based on a 12 ton goliath. I don't believe those numbers for a second of course, but it's a fun sentence. Thank you so much to Pete Larson and Brian Curtis for making this video possible. Go check out Brian's channel at Fossil Crates and tell him I sent you. Comment with your thoughts about Goliath as well. Too good to be true? Solidly bigger than Cope? Is it actually an enormous Edmontosaurus? Let me know. Oh yeah, and if you're asking about Gomez, that's a fragmented caudal vert with an unconfirmed theropod identity. Don't use Gomez. In the original video about Gomez, I said to never use Gomez, and that if you did, he would hunt you down and eat your soul. What did y'all do? You got your souls eaten. Don't blame me. Goliath is head and shoulders better anyway. I'm the notorious Rex Bro, the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.